Hi, I'm Mitch Gallagher from Sweetwater. Whether you're on stage, in the studio, live streaming, creating content, or creating a podcast, one of the most essential pieces of gear you'll use is a microphone. You simply have to have a great mic to capture your sound so your audience can hear you. But there's more to it than just purchasing a great mic. That's just the first step. Once you have your mic in hand, you'll want to ensure that you're getting the most from that mic. And with that in mind, here are some tips to help you get the most from your microphones, whether you're on stage, in the studio, streaming, creating content, or podcasting. I've broken our tips today down into different categories, and the first one is gear or accessories that'll help you get the most from your microphone because the microphone is just the start. First up, I recommend always using quality cables. I've got a great cable here from Proco. It's a mid-price cable, but very durable, very reliable, and it sounds great. You don't have to buy a super expensive cable, just get one that's going to give you good quality. I also recommend having a cable with a right angle connector on it. This allows you to get into tight placement situations, for example on a drum set, or where you want the cable to be less visually obstructive when you're shooting video, taking photos, or you're on stage. I also recommend making sure you have really good mic stands, whether you're using a desktop mount stand like this one, or whether you have a regular boom stand like this one, a good mic stand is so essential. A good mic stand will let you accurately place the microphone. It's easy to use. It's solid. Again, durable and reliable. This one happens to be from Triad Orbit. This one's from Rode. But there are many, many great mic stands on the market. To get the most from your microphones, it's essential that you use a great microphone preamp. The microphone preamp takes that very small microphone signal and ramps it up so your audio interface or your mixer can use it. Whether you're using a standalone microphone preamp or the microphone preamp that's built into your audio interface or your mixer, it can really help you bring out the best in your microphones. If you're recording vocals, a useful accessory is a pop filter. Now, a pop filter breaks up blasts of air that are coming from your mouth when you're recording vocals, those P's, those B's, and M's that can result in pops and thumps in the microphone. So a pop filter is a must-have accessory when you're recording vocals. The last accessory I'll mention today is when you're recording, be sure you're using closed back headphones. These happen to be the Neumann NDH-20s. I use these a lot. They're tightly sealed, so sound doesn't get in, but more importantly, sound doesn't get out, and this results in cleaner recordings. The next category we'll talk about is what I call source. And by source, I mean the things that you're putting the microphone in front of, what you're capturing. The key to this is to listen before you mic. You need to know what your source sounds like in the room so you can place the microphone well to get a great sound quality. You want to educate your ears to what different instruments, different voices, different sources sound like. The more you can listen to live performances, whether it's an orchestra or a piano or an acoustic guitar, when you know what those instruments or voices sound like, it's much easier to get an accurate capture of that using your microphone. Related to that is to try to get as close to the sound that you want as you can straight from the mic so you don't need to fix it in the mix later. Get the sound right at the source first. Make the guitar amplifier sound great in the room. Make the drum kit sound great. Make the piano sound great. Position the vocalist so they sound great right in the room. It'll be so much easier to place your microphone to get a good recording or a good capture of the sound. Now, moving on to the microphone itself. A key thing to do to get the most from your microphones is to learn your microphone's features and how it works. Does it have filters? Does it have pads? Does it have different polar patterns? Is it a condenser microphone, a dynamic microphone, a ribbon microphone? What does all that mean? So learn what your microphone does and how it does it and how you can use those filters to tailor the sound to what you want to capture. But most important, learn what your microphone sounds like. Every microphone has its own sonic signature. This Shure SM7B dynamic microphone sounds very different from this Austrian Audio OC818 condenser microphone. Once you know what your mic sounds like, maybe it has boosted high end, maybe it has boosted low end, maybe it has very prominent mid-range, whatever it might be, you can then apply that knowledge to when you're capturing your sources and get a great sound capture. Related to this is knowing your microphone's polar patterns and when to use each one. For example, the Shure SM7B has a single polar pattern. It's basically a cardioid microphone. It picks up well from the front, not so well from the back. And that's because you want to reject sound from the room when you're using this microphone. This OC818 has multiple polar patterns. So we can set it for an omnidirectional pickup pattern where it picks up basically all around the mic in a 360 degree sphere. It also can be switched to a cardioid polar pattern. Cardioid meaning heart-shaped, where you're picking up mostly from the front, not so much from the back. And it can do bidirectional or figure of eight polar pattern where it's picking up from the front, from the back, and not from the side. There are also different variations in between with this particular microphone. Now, each of those polar patterns has applications where it's going to be very useful and where it's going to work best for the microphone. So knowing those polar patterns and when to use each one can be a very important factor in getting great sound from your microphones. 
The last category we'll talk about today in getting the most from your microphones is placement. And this is critical and probably the most important thing. It's the actual art and skill that's involved in using a microphone, putting it in front of a source, getting it in the right spot, and capturing a great sound quality. So first up, let's again talk about polar patterns because they're very useful when you're placing your microphone. If you're on stage, a cardioid polar pattern is useful because you're picking up from the front, say a voice, but rejecting sound from the back, and that'll help minimize feedback from stage monitors, as well as picking up bleed from other instruments on stage. If you're doing a podcast or live streaming or creating content for video, again, using that polar pattern will help you reject ambience in the room and get a tighter, cleaner recording. Another important factor with placement is distance from the source. A directional microphone, one that has a cardioid polar pattern or a figure of eight polar pattern, is a directional microphone because it picks up in mostly a single direction. With a microphone like that, the closer you get to the mic, the more proximity effect you get. Proximity effect is an increase in bass as well as an increase in level. So that big radio voice can result from getting close in on an SM7B where the uh, bass will tip up and you'll get more level out as well. But this can also result in more distortion, so you have to be a little careful with it. So placing that mic close in will let you get a bigger, thicker sound. But conversely, distance can also equal depth. So pulling the microphone back a little bit, getting a little more of the room sound can give you a more realistic result from the sounds that you're capturing and can sometimes add depth and dimension to the sounds that you're recording or running through your sound system. Especially when you're placing a microphone close in, moving the microphone just a tiny amount can make a huge difference in the sound. Any sound source radiates sound out in a variety of different directions, and there are different frequency responses in each of those directions. So where you place the microphone can have a huge effect on the sound that you're capturing, and moving it just a small amount can make a big difference. So use your ears, move the microphone around, find the right place for it that's going to give you a great sound, and you'll get great results. I hope you'll find these tips on how to get the most from your microphone useful. The last thing I'll share with you is that using a microphone is like developing any other skill. The more you do it, the better you get at it. The key is to use your ears, experiment, and listen closely, and you'll quickly learn where your mic excels, where it sounds best, and how to position it for the best results. Thanks for joining me today. I'm Mitch Gallagher from Sweetwater. Thanks for watching. Be sure to like, comment, and subscribe. Click here for more videos like this, or start at sweetwater.com for all your music instrument and pro audio needs.